Good morning, everybody. <gasps> Today is, oh, what will we call it? Wonderful Wednesday? Wonderful Wednesday. Because I have a lady sitting beside me who actually has made my life very wonderful because you have handled a lot of my money by writing me checks that you hand to me after a real estate closing. That is wonderful. Yes, it is, Miss <laughs> O'Neill. This is O'Neill Anderson, who is an attorney with Hartman Law. And I have to tell y'all, I've been doing real estate so long, it means that Andy is really, really old because do you know Hartman Law did one of my first closings? Uh, I believe it. Many, and many, many years ago. Did you know that this year, officially in April, mm -hmm. marks the 25th anniversary of Hartman Law? Mm -hmm. And I've sold real estate 35 years, so the 10 years before, we would choose an attorney here, there, everywhere, wherever. And now, we kind of go to Hartman Law. It's kind of like our go-to because we know what to expect from y'all. Number one, I've known Gina since she was in diapers. You think about that. I have known Gina since she was a little bitty girl, and it's kind of like they grew up at my house. So it's just a comfortable situation. You know, yeah. and it works for everybody. Works yeah. for everybody. Well, today we're here and, and we're gonna show some photos because I had shared with you that I've been doing a lot of estate sales. And you kind of like stuff and you like china and you like silver and you like things like that. But you don't have a lot of that that you went out and purchased. But did you inherit anything like that? I have uh, some things from my great grandmother. Mm -hmm. It was her first china that she got um, when she got married. So it's obviously and, very precious to you. Well, it's sentimental. Not necessarily yes. valuable, yes. but it's, yes. it's sentimental. And yep. of course, I have all kinds of odd things fabrics that are vintage, um, mm -hmm. quilts, cobalt blue glass, right. depression glass. Right. Um, you know, it's just funny the things you you hang on to and it's more of a sentimental attachment mm -hmm. it's not it's not a financial or you know valuable kind of thing now it's, i'm going to ask you a loaded question are you prepared yourself have you done estate planning so if you were to leave this earth your daughter would know the treasures and the story behind them you know i have as as an attorney i i cannot not have done my estate planning and right. come here with a clear conscience today. Right. That would just right. not be okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but I frankly am at a point in my life where I did not go through and itemize everything I have in my possession mm -hmm. so that everyone in the family would know what it is. I sort of just trusted that everyone would know, mm -hmm. but, but that may be something that I do later on. So people understand what is yeah. in my house, yeah. you know. Because literally a quilt that was made by a great, great grandmother may have a hole in it, the hem may need repair, but it's part of your family heritage. Right, And exactly. nobody's gonna know that if they walk in one day and you're gone and they're disposing of stuff. And I dealt with that on a big scale this year because I did several estate settlements and, and one of them, was a precious little lady that I know and loved so much. She was so so precious and, and she loved clothes. Now I, I can just overstate she loved clothes. Right. She wore your size and she had you no know, probably a size one size bigger than you, but she had so much stuff. And her children said we had no idea she had so much stuff she had like multiple closets full of these clothes. And so I have been, we had an estate sale and then we donated to the thrift store. And the thrift store, I might say, if you wear a size eight, you need to go to the thrift store because I've donated tons of size eight stuff. But O'Neill, there was so much cool, cool stuff. And I just said, as I, as I spent time in the home, I really learned more about her she loved people, she loved the Lord, she had like 30 Bibles in the house. She was an amazing person, but I don't think she prepared her children for, I want you to have this, I want you to have great grandma's library table, because out of all the things in the home, nobody claimed great grandma's library table, and it's still there. And I just think, wow, somebody would want that. Maybe mom should have said, 
Now you take that and you take care of it, but mom didn't do that. So it's, it's a little bit of a burden for the kids because they're like, grandma's table, great grandma's table's still sitting there and nobody has asked for it. Those are things that you need to have that conversation with your family. And if it doesn't mean anything to you, if great grandma, my granddaughter tells me this all the time, but nanny, I didn't know any of those people. Right, so there's no attachment. There's, there's no, no attachment. Connection. No. Um, well, then in that case, then somebody needs to put to paper, hey, these are the things that are important. Everything else, if it's not important to you, then just do what you want to with yes, it. Yes, You know, yes. it doesn't hurt my feelings. You're yeah. not living for me. Yeah. You know, I'm going to be gone. You're not living for the dead, basically. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. right. And that's so important. Now, we're going to share some photos. Um, Trace, can you pull up all the photos? Because I'm just going to talk over these photos, different things that we're sharing. This is an estate that I actually previewed yesterday. This, this property is uh, 25 acres with a, a beautiful, beautiful home, 17,000 square foot house, seven bedrooms, seven baths, amazing, amazing property, and I was previewing it for two clients. Well, their life was set in stone and things changed. And so now this property is for sale. It's $3 million and it is absolutely gorgeous. Did they ever dream that their only child would pass away before them? No. So your life changes. Often there's a kink that happens, something horrific, and then you have to prepare. You don't prepare for your child dying before you. But those are things that we need to do. And COVID changed a lot of that. And I'm sure as an attorney, you've handled cases Actually, I handled a case for an attorney where the young man was about to retire and he passed away from COVID and then we did his estate. It was one of the first ones we did. And I was like, you can't prepare because COVID did change our life a lot. Yeah, and it's, we've had a lot of scrambling in the aftermath of mm -hmm. COVID and in the mm -hmm. midst of COVID. And I mean, there's certain things it's just impossible to prepare for. You just can't, but you do the best you can. Right. But I think now the entire world is more mindful of those what ifs. Mm -hmm. And um, there is just no better time than now to be thinking about those things. Mm -hmm. It's always now. Yes. These are yeah. things that people really need to take care of, not mm -hmm. just for their loved ones and the people who go on without them, but just for their own peace of mind. Exactly. Um, so there's, there's a lot of things to, to be considered, but it doesn't have to be hard. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be. I mean, people make it harder than it is. Well, we, we listed some property a while back and I helped them do the probate of their mother's will. And they couldn't imagine how simple it was because mom had done her job. Mom had done her job and she stated exactly how she wanted it. Now they didn't carry it out just like she wanted it because one sibling was kind of balking with the other sibling and they had a little bit of an issue. And I said, if you're okay with letting him take advantage of you, it's your brother, you decide what you want to do. She let him take advantage of her. And I sat back and watched that and I was kind of sad about it because I said, you know, your mom wanted 50-50, he got a free ride for a long time. And I didn't like that because mom did it correctly. And then one of the siblings cowered down to the other one. And I'm watching this from afar and I'm going, I don't like this. But that's gonna happen too. Yeah, and that's, that's tough. But, but the beauty in that is that, I, and I hate to say it, but I get people who come to me and they know who their children are. They know what their children mm -hmm, are. Mm -hmm. And they can say, look, this, this one has been greedy always been handing this person mm -hmm. XYZ. I paid for his first house. I, mm -hmm. I did this, I did that. And these other two never asked me for anything. Mm -hmm. Or unfortunately, there's a lot of families that have addiction and there are uh, some children where the parents will liquidate a lot of their savings mm -hmm. for, for mm -hmm. rehab and various mm -hmm. other things in the cause of them getting better. Mm -hmm. And I've had people say, look, you know, I spent four hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars on my daughter I'm done and she's received her inheritance mm -hmm. this is it and I'm mm -hmm. not going to be unfair to these other children mm -hmm. and they'll put they'll have me put that in there yeah and that's just it I mean that's the right thing to do that's it that's and, the right thing to do um, you know if you if you put that to paper there's mm -hmm. no reason for the children to squabble you don't leave them wondering or guessing mm -hmm. um, and it's 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 really like I said it's peace of mind for 
the, the person who's putting these things to paper, mm -hmm. but it's also, um, it gives you the ability to just let go of that and just be free with your family for whatever time you have left, whether mm -hmm. it be 50 years or, or 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. you know? That's right. Um, so you can just let go of that and just be in the moment and be mm -hmm. present and not mm -hmm. worry about, well, I think I need to change this or think about something else because mm -hmm. my kids can't get along or I can't uh, move forward on this decision. Um, and the thing is, people think, well, I'm going to put this to paper and I can't change it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but, but these things are yeah. doc documents that you can, they're movable. You can change them as you need to and it's not an act of Congress to right. get it done. And if you're a couple and he were to pass or she were to pass, then you can change things too. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. just because one's passed and you put that to paper, with whoever's remaining, they can go and do whatever they like. They mm -hmm. can revoke whatever they put to paper. They can just slightly tweak it or keep it the same. Yeah. And most of the time, the way I draft husband and wife type uh, wills is that one gets, and this is usually how they like it, which mm -hmm. everyone would want this kind of marriage mm -hmm. where whatever you have goes to your spouse and right. vice versa. And right. then if they're both gone, then it would trickle down to children. whatever heirs that yeah. they've named if they yeah. have children. And, yeah. and that's so important. And, and I learned a lesson in the state of Alabama. Something happened to me that took a lot of stuff away from me, but I was protected by the state of Alabama because the way I had taken title on some property, it was the only thing that I was allowed to keep. And you talk about a hard lesson and, and a, a traumatic time. And I thank God that um, Dean Buttram, who was our attorney in Alabama, told me, he said, Sherry, this is the way it's gonna be. And, and I, thank, I thank him for it because it was literally all I got because things were changed. And um, it's, it's scary. It's very, very scary, but you have to. And, and one of the things that I really wanna hit on is because dementia is a real thing. Alzheimer's is a real thing. And you need to talk to your parents today while they are at themselves. I've been caretaker of a lady who has early dementia. And she's very confused and she doesn't understand life as it is today. And she remembers some things, but she doesn't even remember her child's age. And she only has one heir who isn't available to care for her. So it's important to do it today while we're healthy and while we're at ourselves. Absolutely, and you know, it's not just dementia. Everybody uh, anticipates the possibility of you know, losing your mind older in age. There's all sorts of things that can happen. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you, I've known so many younger people now who, who've had strokes, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, sometimes you recover, sometimes you don't, sometimes mm -hmm. you don't have all the marbles after that mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes you need help making decisions and mm -hmm. um, you know I think again like with the COVID stuff I mean there's just so many people who have um, you know just had unexpected type of, of ailments and um, trying, how to nav trying to navigate that um, alongside just the regular life issues and just dealing with real life mm -hmm. uh, presents you know a whole other set of challenges. A big but, one. Um, yeah, I mean, you don't don't wait till you're old. Don't mm -hmm. don't wait till mm -hmm. you think you're gonna be out to lunch. Well, in the last so four speak. weeks, yeah. uh, a 46 year old neighbor passed away from COVID. A 42 year old young man with four children and a wife owned a business, had a massive stroke, and went to be with Jesus. That's two examples in the last four weeks. And were they both prepared? I don't think so. I don't think so. Because guys, number one, y'all are jocks. You know, they're just guys and guys don't think. They always think they're gonna be the caretaker, they're gonna be the breadwinner, they're gonna be the everything. And sometimes they don't prepare for that, throwing a ball to your kid one day in the park and the next day you're on a vent in the hospital and that night you die. So it's, it's tough. And, and is it harder for you to get men to come in and sit down and say, I need to prepare for taking care of my family or are they willing to do it? Um, gosh, at the verge of, of sounding sexist, I think it's the same kind of territory that you encounter when it comes to men approaching their health mm -hmm. and medicine. They don't if, take care of themselves. If, yeah. uh, and I think it's our society too. Like there's this message that men are just impervious to damage mm -hmm. and they're supposed to be strong all the time and they're supposed to be the support and mm -hmm. they're supposed to be able to do and accomplish all these things, 
but I mean, they're, we're all human. They're still mm -hmm. human, mm -hmm. and you know, even in you know a medical setting, men don't usually feel a sense of urgency unless there's something very wrong, mm -hmm. or they're in pain. Mm -hmm. And I know that sounds so wrong, but I mean, I think women are a bit more proactive mm -hmm. um, about those things, and I, I do find that men will come to me because their wife said. Mm -hmm. I need you to go do this because I can't sleep at <laughs> For night. Me. Yes. Please, yes. please yeah. go talk to somebody. Yeah. Or can we go do this together? Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. if something happens, this needs to be handled. Like mm -hmm. I don't want to be waiting and wondering if something yeah. happens. Yeah. And uh, you know, again, it's the thing of you know, we we can't know the future. We don't know. Mm -hmm. And the last um, couple of years, I've had some shockers myself mm -hmm. where I've had some husband and wife pairs, and we're so focused on one of the spouses in particular because they're dealing with immediate health issues, mm -hmm. and the whole family's there, and they're like, you know, I know dad's gonna go, and he's got <laughs> heart, he's got AFib, and you know, we've been in and out of the hospital, you know, it's been touch and go, and, and, and mom seems perfectly fine, and then I get a phone call, you know, the week after we drafted a will, mm -hmm. and they're like, hey, mom's gone. Mm -hmm. uh, I and need you're going. Uh, is everything that we put to paper okay? Because yeah. we weren't really expecting that. Yeah. And yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I get these little surprises every now and then, mm -hmm. and you know, it just goes to show. I mean, it could happen to anybody. Be prepared. Anybody. Be prepared. And yeah, that's the bottom line. Is yeah. you know, you can't account for everything. You can't account for any detail, but you can be prepared as you can based on the information you mm -hmm. have. Well, one of the estates that we've been working on this year, and I want to see if we can show the photos. This is this is a beautiful brick home up in the Morganton community. has just about 12 acres, and um, he had um, prepared the downstairs for her. She had a beauty shop there, and I'm sure a lot of you will recognize this home. It is one of my favorite places to ever be. This house has the sweetest, sweetest spirit, and it was so filled with love. He was a machinist. He was absolutely amazing. So many things in the home he had made, he had done. I've heard the story about that big, huge tree. There used to be 17 more trees just like it on the property. Just a fantastic piece of property. Everything this couple ever owned was still in the house because this was their home forever. And they absolutely loved being there. It is just the sweetest, sweetest spot. Now, were their children prepared for all that was left? Absolutely not, because everything it you looks see fine was from full. the outside. Yes, it was completely full, <laughs> completely full. The downstairs, the upstairs, the garage, every single inch. There were three other buildings on the property. They had everything they had ever owned, and the kids have now months into this. We're still dealing with a few items here and a few items there, but what a sweet spirit! She went first and he was left alone for seven years. We all know that the women truly are the caretakers most of the time. And so he didn't even want to sell any of her stuff for seven years, even though she was gone. He didn't want to sell her beauty shop equipment. He wanted to keep everything because those sweet memories, mm -hmm. that's just, so hard. Yeah, he's holding on to her still being there. Yes, yeah. yes, and it mm -hmm. is so sad. And I, the first time I walked in there, I said, this man adored his wife. The whole house was mauve and blue. You know that a man loves his wife if all the curtains are pink. And they have ruffles. And they do. Right. And it was, it was to me, it was the sweetest love story I've ever seen. And they were married over 60 years. Wow. And it just, it, it made me cry. Every time I would walk in there, I would pick up one item or look at something. And I would say he adored her. And those are the stories that you want to tell, but then in the end, you also want to make it easy for the kids. It wasn't. She had a 24 place setting of China, hoping that each child would want, they didn't want it. They didn't need it. The, the guys are married and they have wives who, wives, you know, wives have their own stuff. They don't care about other people's stuff. The daughter doesn't use China, didn't want it. It was strange that the things that she loved, nobody cherished, you know. And so it was a little bit hard, and I asked the family not to be there for the estate sale. If you, for, for example, this table, if daddy custom made this table for mama, 
and you price it at $50 for an estate sale, and after three or four days nobody buys it, then you reduce the price. Well, you don't want the family watching what they consider an heirloom to bring $25. So I think it's best if you have somebody come in and do the estate sale and you're not involved in it because as you're dragging out these treasures of gifts you gave mom and all of a sudden you see that at yard sale they bring two dollars and you probably paid a lot more than that for it. So it's, it's a really emotional time. So if you plan the estate well, you also say I want you children to go in the home and get everything you want and then let somebody else handle the estate, I'm going to say a bad word, junk. And it's not junk, but it's stuff that the kids don't want. Right. And, and that, I think that's important. And, and I, I sometimes will have families like maybe the remaining parent mm -hmm. where they start to see all the stuff in the house mm -hmm. and there's a sense of urgency under them because mm -hmm. they know that mom or dad is elderly mm -hmm. and there's a whole shop full of tractor equipment mm -hmm. and farm equipment or mm -hmm. things to work on cars with mm -hmm. and we dealt with they, all of that. They don't yeah. know you know most lay people they don't know what to do with that stuff mm -hmm. and some of it is actually valuable. It's not junk. It mm -hmm. is. These are mm -hmm. things that somebody could really use and could be converted into real cash exactly. for the family. Yep. And to be under the gun and feel a sense of urgency um, after someone has passed, maybe there's a mortgage on the property and mm -hmm. you know it's falling behind and it needs to be paid or something like that. You don't want to be in that position where you're trying to place a value on something and price something out and liquidating something so fast that you're losing money on exactly. it. Exactly. Don't leave any money on the table right. if you don't have to. Yeah. And so, yeah, I have these folks that will come and they'll be like, you know, we've got a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'll be like, what do you mean? Like, are we talking, you know, newspapers filled to the base, mm -hmm. from the basement wall to the attic? Are we, are we talking about um, things like in the shop? Mm -hmm. Is this Tupperware circa 1974 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like what what are we talking you know yeah, yeah. Um, and then they'll start talking details and mm -hmm. sometimes you know these these folks that have these kinds of estates they 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 don't really uh, recognize the value in certain mm -hmm. things and mm -hmm. and maybe the the tractor that's been sitting out in the yard is is an afterthought and they'll be like well you know, my grandson may want that tractor. Mm -hmm. You mean your grandson that lives in Midtown, Atlanta? Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know. Um, I'm thinking we you all. know, maybe you can find a, a a tractor enthusiast who wants to, you know, restore it and and, and you pay can, what it's worth. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, there's there's things to do that if you plan far enough ahead, and and the family has some direction on mm -hmm. it. And there's mm -hmm. people who appraise and, and specialize in placing values mm -hmm. on these things. If, if you have the time, take the time to think about it and mm -hmm. go through it. Mm -hmm. And um, again, it doesn't have to be that hard, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. put something to paper. Yep. I, I always worry about the families who say, no, when mom goes, we're just gonna go through it all. We'll, we'll go through it. Mm -hmm. And when I think about even my, some of my own family members mm -hmm. who have collected everything they've ever owned and then some, mm -hmm. I think that's gonna be a rough day. Mm -hmm. um, and I absolutely, as much as I hate to admit, um, there are some things that I would not want to get like sifted into the junk, so to speak, mm -hmm. but I would absolutely hire a company to just go in and pack it up and sort through mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. and, and that probably would hurt some people's feelings. Mm -hmm. But as a, as a person who's doing the planning, you also have to take some accountability and responsibility for that and say, hey, you know, this is a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, how would I feel if I had to be the one going through all this stuff, trying to figure out what's what? You know what one of the hardest things for me doing this estate sale was? There were two chest freezers in the, in the basement. And they had a garden. And blackberries and corn and frozen squash, hard work, hard work. I had to dispose of all that food because she had been gone seven years. So it had all been frozen <clears throat> seven years. It had freezer burn. And we actually took some to feed to a hog, which was good, and the hog loved it. But, but when you think about 
it's very emotional. When you open that chest freezer and you imagine mom and dad with their garden right here on the property right. and the work and the time they spent together to fill these two freezers. So I told the family, <coughs> leave it alone, Give, don't, let me do it, and I did. I went through the pantry, I went through every item. I donated what was of value and to the thrift stores, a lot of really cool stuff. And then other things, we filled two dumpsters full. And that is sad because a lot of that was hard work that mom and dad put in. That's something emotional you don't wanna deal with. You just don't want to put that burden on yourself. And so I think it's I think it's time that we all pick up the phone and call an attorney at Hartman Law and, and say, we want to sit down. Now, O'Neill, when we, we're gonna take a commercial break and when we come back, I wanna, you know, give them a time frame, tell them what to be prepared to bring in, and let's really make it simple and, and make it, you know, make it doable. This is 2023. This is the year. We don't know what we're facing this year. We know that COVID is still here. People aren't, thankfully, dying like they were from COVID. I talked to Earl Darby this morning at the funeral home and I said, tell me your numbers on COVID. And he said, well, thankfully, people are not dying from it like they were. Because I wanted to know, is it still of great urgency? Do you call them regularly? Or? I love him. <laughs> he's a Shriner and he's gonna be on the show in the near future, Grinfall Car Shows. So yeah, I call the funeral home regularly. I call Kevin Roper, I call, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, you gotta call, you gotta keep in touch with your local funeral home. But it is important because COVID was, we were waiting two weeks to have a funeral sometimes because the funeral home was so backed up. And thank goodness we're not in that situation now. But it is time, 2023 is the year that you need to get it together and, and really sit down with your children and say, you know. And it, it's like this family that I've been dealing with, it's been a lot on them because there was so much to go through. So much to go through. And, and especially since dad was left seven years after mom passed because dad didn't want any of mom's stuff done away with. And, and it, was, it was precious, it was, it was a true love story. Yeah. So we're gonna take a commercial break. When we come back, we're gonna give you a time frame on what you need to do, how you need to prepare, and then you just pick up the phone and call her. She'll sit down with you. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we'll be right back. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? United Country Talking Rock Realty says welcome to North Georgia. The leaves are falling and the mountains are calling. Take the back roads and really get to know North Georgia. Combine the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. The family's visit to the forest inspired a beautiful question. Mother, mother, am I a tree? 
You tell me to stand tall. You tell me to stay rooted. I think I am a tree. My child, my child, of course you are. But what kind of tree will you be? The kind to hug or the kind to climb? Doesn't matter what you choose, so long as you choose to be a tree that's kind. Make the forest part of your story at a park near you. Find one at discovertheforest.org. Okay, now we're going to share some photos. I took some of these photos this morning. If you're a guy and you like to turkey hunt, you don't have to go to the woods, you don't have to travel far. You can go to Jordan Road in downtown Ball Ground. And you can just ride out Jordan Road every single morning. There's a certain yard full of turkeys. And we're going to show these photos. These turkeys, I think today I counted about 20 of them. And I don't know if you could just run out there in the yard and jerk them up by their leg and then clean them and freeze it. <laughs> But look at this, guys. This is a front yard. Now, you will recognize this yard. This lady decorates every single Christmas. She has the best yard in ball ground, and she spends hours and hours and hours and days getting ready to share her home with folks for the holidays. But look at those turkeys are right on Jordan Road in ball ground, and they just wander around aimlessly. Now, could you clean and pluck a turkey and have it for dinner? I have a, a family story about that, and uh, those wild turkeys are not delicious. Oh, I've heard that um, they do not have they, a good they're, flavor. They're not. Yes, uh, they're I gamey have heard that. and stringy and and dry and. So no. You have to be hungry. I'll That's just put it that way. That's not a butterball. Okay, now, this is the reason you're not seeing Mr. J right now. Between Fifty Seven Heaven. And the studio, he's been out for six weeks, but he called last night and he said, I'm making progress, I'm so proud of myself, I'm getting there, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. He will be back in the near future. We don't know exactly how long. He, he was a little testy last night because he's, he's making progress, but he's not quite there. But he's, he's busy, 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 and uh, his true love is 66 Chevelles. He had a silver one, I had a silver one. And it was just weird when uh, when I ended up bringing him in here and we had him as a co-host for so long. And he just he loved the same cars. Now this is this is something at the estate in Morganton. That is an old 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 grapevine from a great great grandmother. And we have to figure out a way to move that and take it to one of the kids' homes and not lose. And I don't know how to do that. I don't, that's something I need to get an arborist in there to tell me, how do we do this? Because that thing is full of grapes every single year. I know a company that can advise. Well, yeah. we, we need it because that is, to me, that's one of the most precious things on that property. And, and that apple tree, you see that apple tree? It's old it's time huge. horse apples. It's huge. And it makes amazing, amazing apple butter. I got some of those apples this year and it's just, the property is just full of really cool goodness and it's been home to the family. Now there's 57 Heaven. And 57 Heaven is full of stuff, including 57 Fords, 66 Chevelle. I couldn't help uh, but notice the school bus. Yes, the school bus. Yeah, that's got a whole story <laughs> in its own. That's the camper. That's actually a camper that goes riding around on the dirt roads and, and you could uh, actually live in that little thing. He happens to own about eight school buses, if I remember correctly. So, you know, so when you're talking about doing his estate planning, it's gonna be really, really funny <laughs> because there's a whole lot of stuff. There's a whole it. lot of stuff. But estate planning is one of those things that we have to take the time. Now, that's the reason y'all haven't seen him lately. You see what he's doing? He's sitting there doing his thing and preparing fan favorites, doing a new CD, cutting the music, getting ready. They're bringing the steel player will be here in a few days. Harmonica's gonna be here. And right now, I wanna share something that got Dwight Sanford, Mr. LJ in so much trouble. I love the song, Smoky Mountain Memories. He'd never done it, never sang it, never knew it. And I'm gonna let the guys play a little bit of Earl Thomas Conley, the man who wrote the song the man who delivered the song, and then the man who didn't do the song for many, many years. I did a live interview with him. He had a temperature of 104. His whole band had the flu, 
and I said, can you please do Smoky Mountain Memories? And he looked at me like I had three heads. He said, I hadn't done that song in years. I said, well, big boy, you're doing it tonight. <laughs> and he did it. He had a sore throat. The band could barely sing that night, and he did my song. So this goes out to Mr. Ella J. Here we go. Okay, we're back. Now, O'Neill, tell us the process and how do people prepare to come sit down with you? Uh, well, I mean, people do it a few different ways. There are some folks who are very technology oriented mm -hmm. and um, they can download an estate planning worksheet from mm -hmm. our website. Mm -hmm. It's hartmanlawfirm.com mm -hmm. and they can print it out and put in all the information on the worksheet and email it to us. Mm -hmm. um, there's some people who don't want to fool with any kind of paperwork. They want to put their eyes on a person. Uh, they want to talk to somebody over the phone. Mm -hmm. um, so usually what I do and what I prefer to do too, because I think people are more apt to be uh, more detailed and more honest when they meet with you about these things and what their concerns are and mm -hmm. what their fears are and all those sort of things when you meet with them in person. Mm -hmm. And so most people just pick up the phone, make an appointment to meet with me, and uh, I set aside a, a, an hour to talk about everything. And then um, once somebody is, uh, we've come to an agreement of what we want to put to paper, then you know they'll come back in in a week or two. and. Uh, review all the documents, make sure it's what they want, and then we sign off that day. Mm -hmm. So from start to finish, we're talking maybe two and a half hours worth of mental and physical mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. invested to just right. take care of it, get yeah. it done. Yeah. Yeah. And if if you die without a will, if you tell me kind of the process, if um, if you die without a will in the state of Georgia. Who steps in and what happens to what you have? <laughs> well, there, it's funny, I, I, I kind of chuckle because sometimes I, I get people telling me some misconceptions that would have never occurred to me, but mm -hmm. some people will think, well, if I um, do have a will, the government's going to take it and then it's going to be tied up for however many years. Yeah. Like in their mind, they think it's going to be tied up. Or if I don't do a will, um, the government's just going to take it forever, mm -hmm. like nobody gets anything. Mm -hmm. um, but what happens if you don't? Well, it's, it makes it a little more complicated. Mm -hmm. It's still not the end of the world, uh, but whoever uh, would be concerned about the estate, which is almost always a, a child or a couple of children, mm -hmm. um, would um, 
petition the probate court as a prospective administrator. Mm -hmm. So they would be administrator of the estate um, instead of an executor. Mm -hmm. Now an executor, um, the difference is, is they are um, appointed through the will to act as the executor and handle all those matters of the estate pursuant to the will. Um, an administrator, I mean, they're just given general powers pursuant to state law mm -hmm. and pursuant to any certain rules that are imposed by probate, by the probate court. And as an heir, you just produce your record showing. Right, yeah. and so as <coughs> if there's just the administration of the estate, then the expectation is that everyone's gonna be honest, who truly is an heir mm -hmm. um, is gonna come forward. The problem with that is, if you've got a complicated family situation where you have maybe four or five kids and there's a black sheep who perhaps has taken advantage of the family in some fashion, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well, by law, they're entitled to equal shares. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You got kids squabbling, well, Johnny uh, stole grandma's pickup truck mm -hmm. and didn't ask anybody mm -hmm, about it. Mm -hmm. This is a real story. Yeah. And um, he shouldn't be getting you know, half this and half that, or 25% mm -hmm. of this, or, right. or what have you. And right. so the, the aftermath can be really awful mm -hmm. if you don't put something to paper for what the heirs are supposed to have. Mm -hmm. um, because there's default laws that entitle the heirs to certain percentages of the estate. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the thing. If, you, if there's certain people who you don't feel deserve or, or should have, something, then that absolutely should be put to paper mm -hmm. and uh, uh, submitted to probate. Yeah. One of the things, <clears throat> I've learned some hard lessons, really hard lessons. Number one, if your situation in life changes, look at your insurance policy and see who is your beneficiary. Absolutely. And make sure that it is not that man that you just divorced. Yeah. Because my daughter did not do that, and her ex-husband got $177,000, and her daughter got nothing. Mm -hmm. I took out the policy. I paid the premiums for 25 years to give my granddaughter everything she would need if her mother were to pass. I wanted to have enough to pay off the mortgage on her house, and that was the goal. But my daughter, in whatever... She was intimidated by him. She was scared of him. He actually purchased the gun that killed her. So if you think it's not, it's a true story, it's a sad story. My daughter did not take care of business. I had to have an estate sale and sell everything we could to pay her funeral bill, which is pretty disgusting when I had $177,000 worth of life insurance. I also had made the down payment on her home, $27,000. He got the equity in the home. I mean. The story goes on and on and on because my own daughter did not take care of business. Did she know she was going to commit suicide? I don't think so. But the life insurance, they had been divorced a while and she just didn't think of it. Yeah. And if you, How critical is if that? If you do nothing else, even if you don't want to come see somebody like me, you don't want to talk about it, you don't want to deal with your mortality, whatever the reason is. Um, it's not that hard to change a beneficiary form. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Those things with your life insurance, those transfer of death forms with the bank, whatever it is you fill mm -hmm. out to show who gets your stuff mm -hmm. if you're not here, those things will take precedence over anything else. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you can do your bank account, POD, pay on death. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it's so simple because right. it's then just, you know. It's just a one page document. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So one single piece of paper mm -hmm. changed the course for your granddaughter mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and really the the course for her yeah. life potentially. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, she lost everything and, and he walked away with every penny of it. And I kept saying, surely to God he will have a conscience and surely to God he will give Tori at least half of it. Not one red cent. Not one red cent. And it was one of those things, you know, I'm surprised I wasn't on the front page of the paper with a baseball bat knocking his lights out. <laughs> you know, I mean, I thought about it. If you were a criminal lawyer, you could have defended me. 
you have these feelings. I was mad at my daughter because she didn't take care of business before she passed. At 42, did she know she was going to take her life? I don't think so. I don't think so. Or was not in the state of mind at that moment to fully appreciate the impact mm -hmm. based mm -hmm. on where her she daughter, was in her life. It, 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 you know, it, it destroyed her daughter's financial well-being that I had set in place for her 25 years earlier. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's sad and it's real, you know, it's real. And I'm sure you've dealt with some horror stories that people think everything is situated and in truth it's not. Right. It's not. Right, and it's important to, to revisit those things and make sure. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. If you if you had the, the time, I'd, I'd love to go through some of the like, top reasons why Absolutely. people don't take care of it mm -hmm. and just maybe sift through some of those fallacies that we have. It's, it's really fallacies of thinking. Some of it's just lack of motivation and mm -hmm. maybe you know, just natural procrastination tendencies of humankind. Mm -hmm. um, but I think underneath it all is um, just some faulty thinking, perhaps, on why we're not doing what we should be doing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of folks who have lived a very simple life, they've just worked hard and they don't have a whole lot, mm -hmm. maybe they don't even have um, a higher education, will think, well, why do I need to see a lawyer? Mm -hmm. I don't have an estate. People mm -hmm. think a state, they're thinking lifestyles of the rich and famous. Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. thinking, um, you know, high end. They're thinking lots of assets, high value. These are the people who have, you know, trusts and mm -hmm. um, are, are clinking champagne glasses together and eating caviar with, mm -hmm. you know, Not hobnobbing. Okay. Yeah. An estate is anything that you have that holds value. Mm -hmm. It could be um, a show dog that's worth $50,000. I know that's random. Mm -hmm. It could be your three bedroom, two bath brick ranch house on mm -hmm. an acre. Mm -hmm. That could be everything you have. Mm -hmm. It could be $20,000 in your bank account, but guess who can't get it mm -hmm. unless they do something through probate? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, nobody's getting it. Mm -hmm. It could be your, your Silverado pickup truck. Mm -hmm. it, that could be it and mm -hmm. that's okay, but mm -hmm. you don't want to put the difficulty or the burden on someone else to have to figure that out. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I find time and time again, so many, so many people, especially young folks, myself included, we don't want to deal with the reality of being mortal. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know about you. Now, I've met a few people who are never going to die. Yeah. They, I'm because die right here on the airline. I mean, they're, they're either just mean and hateful <laughs> yeah. or exceptionally yeah. annoying. Yeah. The, the, the mean and the very annoying, they live forever. They live forever. <laughs> so those people are, they're probably exempt from what I'm talking about. You can just yeah. shut your ears off. If you're like that, you don't have to listen. Yeah. Um, but, but nobody wants to deal, it's, it, it's like, I know it's kind of weird to think about it, but it's like a lot of people believe, well, if I put myself in that mindset that I'm gonna die, mm -hmm. maybe I will. Mm -hmm. you know, they, mm -hmm. and, and especially with older population, I, I hate to say this, but sometimes I get, I always ask this question when I have an older person coming in, is, are, is this just something you think you need to do? Or is there a pressing health concern? Or is mm -hmm. there something going on with you and part of it is, do I need to get you in here sooner to sign? Mm -hmm. Are you going to drop dead next week? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, a, a, and that's a practical concern. Mm -hmm. And I've mm -hmm. actually, unfortunately, had that happen. I've had it where people wait too long mm -hmm. and they're on a cannula and they've got an oxygen tank and they're wheeling into my office and they sound like a drowning mud skipper. Sand. And they're like, yeah, I need to get this done. I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. you're telling me. Mm -hmm. And then I get a call two days later, hey, um, Dad's not going to be able to make it in. He's in the ICU, mm -hmm. and I mean this is this is real life. Yep. So so reckon with yourself. My advice is recognize mm -hmm. that you are at some point going to go. It may not be this week, mm -hmm. but at least you know be as ready as you can be. Mm -hmm. um, another thing is people are so they 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 overcomplicate and they overthink about uh, what they need to put to paper. Mm -hmm. I have so, so many folks on, on different 
points of the continuum. I have some where they want to tell me every single account that they have in every single bank and exactly what's in it. And I, honestly, that's going to change daily, daily. yearly. Yeah. Like yeah. I, don't, I don't need to know that. Mm -hmm. That's not that's not what is going to be important in the long run. And then um, people think they have to itemize every little thing that they have, which is great if you're one of those folks that have a lot of sentimental things, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. But um, I'll, I'll have people say, well, I'm just not ready to see you yet. I'm just not ready to sign because I don't know who I want that vase to go to. And I have this ring from my great grandmother and I thought my granddaughter wanted it, but she doesn't and I just can't decide. All right, well, we'll put something to paper. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be about the ring mm -hmm. or the vase, but but don't make that one little item mm -hmm. throw out the rest of the value mm -hmm. and make things more complicated than it has to be. Um, but I have folks that feel like they need to go through their house with a clipboard, mm -hmm. and if that makes them feel better, great, and we can attach that to the will, we mm -hmm. can put it in the will, you know, that, that does streamline some things, especially mm -hmm. for the family members. Um, but don't let, you know, that, that indecision be a barrier to getting something down. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. really important. Um, and then something else we touched on is family drama. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I can count on one hand in the last year, and I, and I kind of try to be funny about it, but I'll, I'll, you know, I have like a married couple come in, they've been married 30, 40 years, and I'll ask them, how many children do you have? And they'll tell me, and I said, well, do you like all your children? Do you <laughs> still, go, do you still like them? The <laughs> do you still like them? And, and yeah. you know, it, it kind of breaks the ice, but, but a lot of parents at that point, their kids are, are grown and they kind of know who's gonna be the most responsible. Mm -hmm. It may mm -hmm. not be the oldest child, yeah. okay? And the one willing to take on the burden. Right, maybe, yeah. maybe the one who they originally thought was gonna be the person to handle everything um, is having a midlife crisis and they're living in a hut somewhere in the desert mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they don't know when they're coming back. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe the daughter who's just been a little flighty but lives in the same town is gonna be the one. Mm -hmm. And you kinda have to go with whoever is practically available mm -hmm. at the time. And that's not to say you can't change it later. You can change that. But I think a lot of fe people have feel like their hands are tied because there's dysfunction in the family mm -hmm. or they're afraid of offending someone if they choose, you know, Johnny is going to be my executor and, you know, I'm, uh, m maybe not because Johnny is, is a real good person with business and finance, but because he cares and mm -hmm. because he checks in on us and because mm -hmm. he's available. Mm -hmm. My my other son, who's a CPA, um, you see he's, him once a year. you know, I see him at Christmas. Maybe he'll show up at Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's things like that that people give consideration to. And people feel like, well, if I put this to paper, then they're going to know about it. And then I'm just going to uh, suffer with it until I die, mm -hmm. that they know what I've done. Right. And I'm going to hurt their feelings because I chose one kid over the other to handle this. And be assured, being an executor is no easy job. No. It, no. it, I mean, sometimes it's easy, okay? Maybe just two or three things to sign off on. But it's, it's not like you're rewarding them or, or, or gifting something to someone as their capacity as an executor. Now, yes, it is an honor. Mm -hmm. It is a position of, of, um, of implicit trust and mm -hmm. honor. Absolutely. But it's that not. That you're gonna do what was expected of you. Right. The way and, they want you and to do it. And not everybody's yeah. gonna do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so. Well, I wanna ask you, we're, we're running out of time, but I wanted to ask you about a life estate. If, if a couple is there and um, do they do a life estate for each other if something were to happen? Because I have a friend whose husband did that and it left her in place to live in the home until her death and mm -hmm. then his children from a previous marriage will get the home. That, does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. Um, you know, that's something that is a um, aspect of, of titling property that historically was much more used than it is now. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have now, this is what most couples do is a joint tenancy deed. Right, so that, that's what we had in Alabama. You know, what yeah. it, whatever um, 
whatever you have, both spouses would be on title, for instance. It doesn't have to be a married couple. It could be your next door neighbor if you wanted to add mm -hmm. them to title. Mm -hmm. But whoever is surviving, that property then falls to them right. Um, right. without the necessity of probate. Right. You just need a death certificate to mm -hmm. show that they've passed Absolutely. and there's a little affidavit that would be filed. Right. Now, a life estate will basically have some language in the deed itself that permits whoever this person is holding the life estate mm -hmm. to occupy the property, live in the property, what, whatever they want to do with the property mm -hmm. for their yeah. lifetime, like literally their lifetime. The trouble with that can be is what if grandma has a life estate in the house, but grandma uh, has a stroke mm -hmm. and she can't live there anymore, mm -hmm. like she physically can't, but she's not dead. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so her interest 30 is... 30 years, I just dealt with one, 30 years, 30 years. Yeah. The lady was hung up with this problem, 30 yeah. years. So, yeah. her, so her interest in the life estate, that's still a reservation on title. Oh yeah, it she, is. She has the right, <laughs> yes, it is. She has the right to be there, mm -hmm. even if she can't be there. Mm -hmm. And if yep. there's no power of attorney mm -hmm. uh, for someone to release that estate on her behalf, yep. then your problem becomes is someone is going to have to step forward as a guardian and conservator mm -hmm. for that person who's mentally incapacitated. Mm -hmm. There's going to have to be a separate probate action mm -hmm. to establish guardianship and conservatorship and there'll have to be a guardian ad litem appointed to establish an opinion as to whether it is in the, the ward's best interest to let that life estate go. go. Yep. Right, and it could be yep. like a two-year endeavor. Can I just say yeah. pain in the drain Huge. for a long time? Huge, over a single sentence yes. in a deed. Yes. So I, I would be, I'm not saying don't ever put a life estate mm -hmm. on paper, but mm -hmm. I would say if you do that, always make sure there's a valid power of attorney behind it to back right. it up in right. case somebody How needs simple. to release that yep. interest. Yep. Um, but there's other things you can do. I, I would That would be a, a point of last resort that mm -hmm. I would use for an estate planning mechanism. And, and the other thing that I, I just saw this and it's just it's just advice on mistakes and problems I've seen if there is a life estate and if you are holding this property and if you can put it in a conservation plan so you're not paying full-blown taxes on this property for all these years it's held up if you don't know if it's 10 acres or more you can put it in conservation and you can save yourself and the estate so much money I just witnessed that not happen on a property. And I was like, you mean it's not in conservation? No, we never did that. And I was like, holy cow, for 30 years they paid full-blown taxes on property that was sitting there being held hostage, really. Yeah, and if you know the property is going to be held wow. hostage, why wow. not go ahead and commit to that covenant? Ooh, yeah. It's a, a conservation use covenant is a 10-year commitment where right. you basically establish um, and certain uncle, use uncle for the property. Lived 30 years. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, that's that's a travesty. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was tough. Well, the, the tax office doesn't think so. No, but. they loved it. <laughs> <laughs> they loved it. Well, you look at the time, our hour has gone. Now, I can't give folks it. your phone number at Hartman Law. Okay. Uh, if anybody wants to reach out and give me a call, meet with me, talk about planning your demise. Yeah. Um, my phone number is 706-253-7700. Whoever answers the phone can put something on the calendar and I'm happy to meet with you. And, and her uh, name is O'Neill Anderson and she is our closing attorney of choice and we love showing up there. We'll be there next Wednesday, I believe, for a closing. I yep. love it when you show up. Yeah, and sometimes, sometimes do I show up with peach cobbler? Sometimes she brings <laughs> cobbler, and uh, yeah. we have a lot of vices over there at Hartman Law. There's a candy card and an ice cream cooler, <laughs> but my personal favorite is the cobbler. Peach cobbler. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. right. Yeah, thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. Thank you it's guys for tuning in. Tomorrow, Bill Sendard will be back, and it will be fun, and we will be talking about music trivia because he is the trivia master, and often he gets me, and he told me to brush up on Glenn Campbell I don't know squat about Glenn Campbell. So tomorrow's going to be an interesting day, but we'll see you again soon only on ETC. Bye, y'all.